confession of faith, Jesus is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. Let's all greet one another. Let's obey the word of God. With this, the title today is You Give Them Something to Eat. Through the declaration of Start 10,000 2025 last Sunday, we started a courageous challenge to reach 10,000 church members by October next year, which is the 38th anniversary of the church. And so starting this afternoon, a oneness workshop is being held with the Board of Directors, officers and regional leaders from the Gangseo re districts. As I mentioned during the Friday prayer meeting, immediately implementing the word declared from the pulpit is the beautiful spiritual asset of our Yewon community. And if you were to ask how to live a life achieving spiritual growth and exerting spiritual influence while living a walk of faith, my answer would be immediate implementation. When the word from the pulpit is declared, there are moments when the word comes to you as Rema. It's the Rema word when the word really comes and enters into your heart. And in those moments, it is crucial to put them into action immediately. Do not doubt it, do not calculate, but just act immediately. And that's how I have lived my life. And in fact, Satan begins his attack the moment you say Amen to the word from the pulpit. And how does Satan attack? When you say Amen, a strong determination is made as if you will immediately put them into action. But strangely, the moment you step out of the worship hall, you tend to forget or postpone it or you make various excuses. And he makes it so that it quietly disappears. And you forget when you even listen to the word or you forget when you received grace. And that happens every Lord's day, your whole life. You listen, you forget, you listen and you forget. And that prevents your spiritual growth, even though you go to church for so many years. Your spiritual state is the same, or even goes backwards. When your spiritual state should be growing every single day. Because you have never obeyed the word, you don't have the growth, and you just live your life the same as unbelievers. That's why you cannot have spiritual influence on other people. You should be able to say to people that Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all problems. You should be living that life as a witness of Christ. But you cannot even imagine living your life like that. So you must not try to do too many things. Just focus on the direction that is set by the church and concentrate on that and follow along with that. Don't try to make more things. And concentrate on the time schedule of answers given through the messages from the pulpit. And try to apply at least one message from the pulpit each week. Don't even try to do two things, because you will forget. Just do one thing. Hold on to one word. Don't forget that and just try to really do holy meditation on that word for a few days. 
and really try to apply that. Then one day you will experience the blessings of spiritual growth. And your spiritual eyes will open. Even the disciples of Jesus were like that. Jesus did not suddenly assign them significant tasks. He showed them himself as he did his ministry. And he had them experience those things one by one. As we saw in last Sunday's message, Jesus paired the disciples and sent them out to experience the field. And so he said, go out and experience for yourselves whether the word that I said is fulfilled or not. And particularly at the time, there were many mentally ill people and many people who were taken hold of by demons. And so he gave them the authority to cast out those demons. And he said, cast them out in my name and rely on me. And if you do, then the, the demons will be cast out. And so he taught them how to proclaim the gospel. And it really was done according to what he said. And in today's passage, we see the disciples returning from the field after experiencing remarkable healing and restoration. So they saw Jesus do it, and then they did it, and they experienced the same answers, these men who were just ordinary fishermen. And so they come to Jesus and report in detail about what they've done. So when you restore the field, then you change, and that changes the field. The field of your family, the field of your workplace, the field of your meetings. Even if visible results are not immediately apparent, there is no reason to be disappointed. Going to the field, or I went on a camp, the fact that you went alone means that you have already achieved spiritual growth. And because someone with the light of Christ went into the field, it may not be visible to your eyes, but the force of darkness have already been broken down. When light shines, the darkness retreats, and you are light. You are the light of the world. You have to acknowledge that. And so a life that spiritually recognizes this lives differently. It's completely different. Today's passage contains the famous miracle of the five loaves and two fish. And this miracle is one of the most representative miracles of Jesus that appears in all the four gospel books. And it's a miracle that we're all used to hearing about and we know of well. And so it's the story of how Jesus performed a miracle through five loaves and two fish brought by a boy feeding 5,000 men. And back then, they didn't record the number of women and children, and so they just recorded by men. And so if we include everyone that was there, it would be nearly 20,000 people. And so it's a miracle that with five loaves and two fish, he was able to feed nearly 20,000 people. And we know of this story very well. So when I did the pilgrimage and visited the field, there's actually a church built there that was called the Church of the Five Loaves and Two Fish. And we were unable to go on that trip this year because of the, the war, but hopefully we'll be able to go next time. And so it's like a commemorative church of this miracle. 
And this miracle reveals Jesus himself as the Creator God. Because if it isn't God, then how could he feed all those people with only five loaves and two fish? And not only did he feed them, but it was abundant and there was leftovers. And this actually happened. That's why there's a church that commemorates it, that is standing in that place right now. So Jesus, what is he saying right now? He's saying, I am God. I am the creator God. That's the message that he is giving. Who is Jesus? Is he just Mary's son? Is he just a carpenter's son? He is the creator God who came in the flesh and blood. However, when we explore the context of the passage, we can see that Jesus is training the disciples spiritually. That's what the focus of Jesus is, to spiritually train the disciples. He says to them, you give them something to eat. Jesus' method of working is through people. More specifically, it is through disciples. Disciples who can do ministry just like Jesus. Disciples who can give messages just like Jesus. And thus, even though we set a goal of 10,000 church members for Start 10,000 2025, ultimately, we should be looking towards raising 10,000 disciples. 10,000 disciples who can say that Jesus is the Christ no matter where they go. We have around 7,800 people right now. But even the young remnants should be able to say this. And all the believers at our church have a nation within their heart. Really, we're the only church that has done this. Even the remnants have one. And so we wish for our believers to be able to bring forth the evangelization of the 237 nations and 5,000 people groups. And so in 2024, all of our Yuan Church family members must possess the spiritual identity as absolute disciples of Jesus Christ. And you must equip the appropriate vessel accordingly. Therefore, I bless all of you in the name of the Lord to become well-prepared disciples who immediately respond within the time schedule that the Lord calls you. The main point, recognition of the disparate field. Verse 30 reads, The apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. As we saw last week, the disciples who received Jesus' sending and went to the field returned to report in detail to Jesus about what happened in the field. And they had so much to say about what happened. And this is the attitude of someone who really obeys Jesus. They will have a lot of things to say. And Paul did not go around saying ridiculous things or useless things. He only spoke of the work of God. He only spoke of the Bible. And so I hope that you also have a lot to say. You believe in Jesus and yet you are not well spoken. That person doesn't receive grace. They have no experience of going out into the field. They have no experience of doing evangelism. The fact that you have a lot to say means you are able to do evangelism forum. And it is important to spread this forum culture in the church and in our regions. Evangelism forum and forum on the word and forum of prayer. When these forums become more active, the entire church is bound to overflow with liveliness. And forums have no specific format. 
You can say anything except for words of unbelief. Words of unbelief and negative words are th words that Satan gives you. And forum is about sharing the grace that you have received. So if you're unable to forum, that means you haven't received grace or you haven't received answers. And that's the case for a lot of Korean churches and for a lot of the churches of the world. They must forum about their ministry, about evangelism, about the word and prayer. And yet they sit there and they talk about other people. They're just doing, running errands for the devil. And I heard that um, at Suangluk Church, they don't even have meetings because so many people talk negatively in those meetings so unless a church minister is present they don't do any sort of um, gatherings together the church members should gather and have fellowship and have forum that always saves other people that's forum culture And this is possible if each person has a gospel perspective. And really pray to God, please let me have a gospel perspective. And each week we have newcomers, especially today, we have a lot. And they've never done a forum before. And so they're, they were unbelievers. And so they might think, oh, I came to church and now I have to forum. They don't know how to do forum or have a spiritual conversation. You just have to be patient. Do not judge them and don't tell them to do a prayer. Just let it be natural and let them listen. And if they don't want to give forum, then just skip over them. Just let it be natural. Don't say we all have to have a turn and we have to go around in a circle. So you have to say something as well. So they can naturally catch on by listening and observing others who share. But if you give a burden to them, they will not want to come to church. Don't say we all have to have a turn and you have to pray as well. And so they might feel a burden and say, I'm too busy and I won't be able to come to church anymore. That's why even when you do Tarakbang meeting, do it really comfortably comfortably because if you give a burden to them then they'll go into hiding and you must be patient with them and by having these forums each individual is bound to become revived and receive new motivation that's the spiritual benefit of having forum do not judge what the other person is like and don't say, you shouldn't forum like that. Because then, their hearts will be closed. And they won't be able to talk the next time. Just do it naturally. And so after finishing this evangelism forum with the disciples, Jesus intended to take a boat to a quiet place for a brief rest. However, many people saw Jesus take the boat and they ran ahead and arrived at the destination even before Jesus. They were already there. What does this mean? They were so desperate. If you truly are spiritually desperate, then you will not come right on time to the worship. You will be here way ahead of time. So verse 34 reads, When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And 
So if you hear a crowd without a sheep, without a shepherd, you might not understand. But back then, at the time in, in Israel, there were a lot of people who were shepherds. And what happens to sheep without a shepherd? They will become flustered and they will wander. And the phrase had compassion here is not just a simple expression in the original language. It conveys the pain of feeling a very deep, gut-wrenching agony. So this is how pitiful Jesus felt for the people that had gathered there. And so our closing song for worship on the Lord's Day is Revival. And it begins with the words, Look at the desolation of this land and starts with a confession, O oh Lord, show your mercy, forgive our sins, and restore this land. So when singing this praise, we should have the same spiritual sincerity as Jesus, who compassionately looked at the lost souls wandering in the deserted field. And so we must have spiritual sincerity that opens our spiritual eyes to recognize the spiritual state of the fields. And do you think we just chose this praise song without any standard? Really, the healing and restoration is within the lyrics of this praise. And from one moment, a lot of people sing praises as if they're just chanting a Buddhist prayer, but it shouldn't be like that. And right now, in our age right now, we are really moving towards great developments, especially within science. However, this world becomes more desolate and barren and we are engulfed in various idol worshipping cultures and fortune telling practices and religious cultures and people are really floundering and it is crucial to open our spiritual eyes and recognize the spiritual state of this field and in March the Pakistan mission camp that enlarges the tent of missions is taking place and as I briefly mentioned last Sunday, this field is too urgent. So Pakistan ranks seventh in the world for persecuting Christians among the Islamic countries. And so the only minister who was Christian was killed and shot. And it, the country itself shares borders with Iran and Afghanistan and India. But even within this challenging environment, there are desperate souls that God has prepared. And from my perspective, each person is a disciple. Just like the early church, they are like the life-staking disciples. And God has opened doors as a crucial bridge for the gospelization of the Islamic region in the Middle East. And especially the 50,000 people who are to gather in one place during the camp. And all that we are doing is providing buses to help them gather in that one place. And these people, they do not know, they do not want anything else. They just want to hear the gospel, the accurate gospel. And they are coming from all over the country. That's how desperate they are, just to hear the gospel. And what else could I say to them? I will proclaim only the pure gospel. Only Jesus is the Christ. 
Only Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all problems. Only Jesus is the Christ, the solution to all problems. That is the only answer because it is the truth of uniqueness given to us in the Bible that Jesus alone is the Christ. And in the lines of the closing song revival, it says, Now all of us must unite to rebuild the collapsed foundation of this land. And this conviction shows us that without the foundation of Jesus Christ, Everything will be like the Tower of Babel that will crumble down. This is why we must rebuild the foundation of life on Jesus Christ and build our house upon it. We must rebuild our house upon Jesus Christ. If Muhammad is Christ, we must believe in Muslim. If Mary is Christ, we must believe in Catholicism. If Buddha is Christ, we must believe in Buddhism. However, the Bible clearly states that only Jesus is the Christ. That is why we believe in Jesus. That is why Jesus becomes my strength and only Jesus gave me salvation. Only within Jesus Christ do we have salvation. And if you look at YouTube, there are a lot of videos where people talk about their testimonies of hell. And they say that people are like crying out within the fiery pits. And they just yearn for one drop of water. There are a lot of videos like that. And do you truly have to die and experience it for yourselves? No. It's already too late if you die. And do you not believe just because you have not been there? So we must believe in and must proclaim Jesus Christ. And salvation is only found in Him. That's why we are going. And I hope that they may find the answer with only the gospel and gain new strength and enter the Islamic fields full of darkness and stand as firm partisans of Christ. So we have a camp team of 55 people and most of them are young adults because it's very difficult um, for older people to go on the long plane ride and journey there. And there are a lot of young adults who are really devoted. And I will also proceed with LTS for the 1,500 pastors there. And then the next day we will do the evangelism retreat for the 50,000 people. And so I will be going on Saturday, and so the Sunday pop-up message will be recorded beforehand. And then on the Sunday, I will be giving these messages. I'm sure you've all been praying up until now, but I hope you all pray more intensively for the upcoming camp. And so I pray in the name of the Lord that all members of the Yewan community may become witnesses of enlarging the tent of 237 missions. The second main point, the actualization of the mission given to me. Verse 35 reads, And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. So as they listened to the lively message of the gospel that Jesus was preaching, the people gathered there did not even realize that the day was late. They did not realize that the sun had set because they were receiving so much grace. And so at that time, the disciples came forward and suggested to Jesus that since there were too many people gathered here, it would be better to send them back to the village and have them provide food for themselves. However, Jesus' answer and response was completely different from what the disciples 
suggested. Jesus said to the disciples, you give them something to eat. From the disciples' point of view, it must have been perplexing to say the least. How could we possibly feed all these people? And in the scripture, one disciple quickly calculated and answered back that even 200 denarii would not be enough to feed that many people. And in the book of John, we can see that this disciple is Philip. So one denarius is the daily wage of a labor worker at the time. And nowadays, the daily wage in the labor market is more than 10,000 won. And so if 200 denarii were to be valued at today's currency, it would be around 20 to 30 million won. And so from the disciples' point of view, this was impossible. But did Jesus not know of the situation when he told the disciples to give them something to eat? So what does this mean? He is saying something that doesn't suit the situation right now. So why did he say this? He is opening the eyes of faith of the disciples. He is saying, do not calculate, but open your eyes of faith. And so it contained the means to train the disciples. And so Jesus told the disciples to go and find out how many loaves there were. And the disciples brought five loaves and two fish. And through those five loaves and two fish, Jesus performed an amazing miracle to which even 5,000 men, having eaten abundantly, 12 baskets were left over. So Mark, the author who wrote the text, focused on the part where the disciples obeyed and followed Jesus' word and experienced the amazing miracles. And as a result, Ultimately, the disciples were able to provide the food as Jesus had said. And so through the miracle of the five loaves and two fish, Jesus gave his disciples the message that they should no longer be providers of food only for the physical body, but to be providers of food for the soul. So the mission to share Jesus Christ, the bread of life to the souls wandering in the spiritually empty fields, has been given to us. So believers of Yewon Church, you give them something to eat. This mission is not given to someone else. It is given to me. Why on this morning is God making you hear this mission of you give them something to eat? It's a mission given to me. And in order to fulfill this mission, we are doing the Start 10,000 2025 and the Team of Three movement. So may all members of Yewon Church take on the courageous challenge of Start 10,000 2025, embracing Jesus' heart and interest, who looked upon the yearning souls in the field and had compassion. So I bless all Yemen believers in the name of the Lord to have evidence of building an eternal partisan of Christ in the field. This is the conclusion. In today's passage, the disciples who did not properly understand Jesus' words of you give them something to eat were decisively used in the miracle of the five loaves and two fish. What do you think is the reason for this? They didn't have much faith, but they were used. And the reason for this was absolute obedience. In the passage, Jesus instructs the disciples who brought the five loaves and two fish to have the crowd sit in groups of 50 or of 100. And in the original language, to sit means to lie down slightly tilted. And this was the Jewish habit or way of eating. And this is only done when they surely have something to eat. And so this meant that the people there were all sitting as if they were ready to receive what they would be given to eat.
And if not, then there would have been a big commotion. However, even within that situation, the disciples obeyed the word of Jesus. And that's not an easy thing. And when Jesus said to give out the five loaves and two fish, they did so. Even though this all made no sense at all. However, when they obeyed, everyone was able to eat abundantly. There's a reason why I'm sharing this. Even if you do not understand what is being proclaimed from the pulpit, or if you think it's too much to bear at times, or you think it's unrelated to you, I encourage that you first simply try to obey because it is the word of God. Just obey. It is not myself who arises works of miracles, but Jesus. Amen? Miracles will be performed by Him, not myself. When we obey Jesus' word, you give them something to eat. The miracle of everyone being fed and satisfied will arise. So I bless all believers of Yewon Church in the name of the Lord that you may experience these miracles in the field this week. Let us pray. Father God, you said you give them something to eat. Even though it was a message very difficult to obey, when they did, you performed miracles. Just like this, when the word is proclaimed at the pulpit, please let us be able to obey it. And let us be able to say Amen right away and obey instantly, so that we can see the works of God. And let us be able to experience answers of spiritual growth. I pray in Jesus Christ's name. Amen.